Hello, everyone. Welcome to tonight's session of Resounding Visions. My name is Misael Diaz. I'm an assistant professor of art, media, and design at Cate San Marcos and the instructor of AMD 368 Art of World Cultures, one of the courses that has been hosting the Resounding Vision speaker series this semester. I'm joined tonight by Jeffrey Ray. Thank you, Misael. I am the instructor for AMD 38. 308 sound class, where I've been hosting some of the artists who have been giving workshop and performances. Uh, these workshops have included answering questions and giving advice to our students. Kip Malone did an amazing job on Tuesday. Great, yes. And we wanted to begin uh, today's presentation uh, with a land acknowledgement. Uh, we'd like to acknowledge that uh, Professor Ray and I are speaking to you tonight from the unceded territory of the Kumeyaay peoples. Um, and that the meeting place of CSUSM and its surrounding areas is still home to the six federally recognized bands of the La Jolla, Pala, Pama, Pechanga, Rincon, Soboba, Luceño, Payamcoicham people. We'd like to take this moment to acknowledge and express our appreciation and respect for those groups whose homelands we reside and learn on, recognizing that they are stewards of this land and have been from time immemorial in spite of the ongoing violence of settler colonialism. Given that we're not all together for uh, tonight's session, we invite you to take a look into whose uh, ancestral homelands you reside on by consulting the resources that I'll be popping into the chat shortly as a first step in recognizing the resilience and strength of indigenous communities, as well as expressing solidarity with efforts to undo their intentional erasure. So let's take a few quiet seconds to absorb and project resilience, strength and solidarity uh, as I share those resources now. Thank you again. Um, welcome to our last session of Resounding Visions. This is a year long series of BIPOC artists, musicians and scholars who work at the intersection of sound and art to explore forms of cultural resistance and affirmation. We are happy to announce we will be continuing this program next semester as well. So it's a bit of a celebration, yay. Um, the programming committee for the series includes faculty members, Misael Diaz, Christine Dickman, Anna Louise Petresco, and myself, Jeff Ray. And we wanted to also take this opportunity to extend a very special thank you to Stephen Laura Wagner and the Epstein Family Foundation for the generous funding that uh, has made these events possible and will continue to do so. Uh, and we also wanted to take this moment to uh, thank the School of Arts uh, staff that has been providing support for this series, especially about Albert Rascon, who's been behind the scenes uh, and instrumental uh, to making sure that uh, these sessions uh, flow and sound and look amazing. So thank you uh, to Albert and to the rest of the staff. Before I pass it back over to uh, Jeffrey Ray to introduce today's guest speaker, I wanted to let you all know that in lieu of using the chat to share questions and or comments with our presenter, we ask that you please use the Q&A function. We're going to be sh uh, shutting down the chat shortly. So again, if you have a question or comments, we do encourage you to submit those uh, by typing them into the Q&A um, and Jeffrey and I will be addressing those um, after the presentation. And today's presentation by Kip Malone will last approximately 45 minutes. And afterwards, we will be opening it up to questions and comments, which we will be reading out loud for our presenter to respond to. Please forgive me for any name mispronunciations. <laughs> and now, now it's my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker for tonight, Kip Malone. Kip has been and still involved with many musical projects, including Ray Machine, TV on the Radio, and Ice Balloons. He has recorded with Tinar Warwin, uh, who are a group of Tuareg musicians from the Sahara Desert region of Northern Mali. He's currently at Sonic Ratch Music Studio in Texas, where he is playing on and producing musician Aaron Durant's latest album. Kip Malone is also an actor. He's been in a few films, including the just released science fiction film, Doors. He plays a character, Jamal, who communicates by and with extraterrestrials by experimenting with sounds. Um, some of the sound machines resembles modular synths, which Kip also works with. Um, Kip is a visual artist as well, who is part of the Yams Collective, short for How Do You Say Yaman African, 
comprised of 38 international, mostly black and queer musicians, poets, actors, writers, and visual artists who created a digital media piece for the Whitney Biennial. The group had decided to boycott their entry due to the Whitney's history of non-inclusion of BIPOC artists. Kip also collaborates with his wife, Chris Limsalu Malone, who is a renowned sculptor, performance artist, and installation artist. Their collaboration, Love Song, Sing Along, was recently exhibited at the KW Institute for Contemporary Art in Berlin, as well as the Kai Institute in Estonia. The curator at the KW Institute describes the installation as a journey that focuses on life, death, and the afterlife, and how we as humans live together with animals and how nature can be spirited. We are so excited and so honored to have Kip join us. So please welcome Kip Malone. Welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. Um, I, I, I am, Everything he said was true. Um, that that's a, a pretty accurate bio of, of recent years of creative work. Um, not all of those things are still things that I'm that I'm like currently engaged with, but they all have uh, fed me creatively to where I am right now in this moment, and. Uh, um, grateful for all of those families and all of all of those experiences. Um, currently, it's it's been a fun, funny time, hilarious hilarious time in the world. Uh, the past year, I know, um, was very difficult for for so many people, and I. I experienced some of that. Um, I, I had some privilege um, in the form of being partnered with someone uh, from Europe. Uh, and at this point in, in the process of her gaining legal access to entry to this country, um, we, were, we had to travel, we had to keep going back to Europe and that, uh, made my experience of the past year much different than a lot of others. And uh, in that time, I got to have some art shows and uh, continue our, collab our creative collaboration. Um, I would like to maybe start by sharing some images, uh, some video from some of the things we did last summer. Um, that sounds good. Uh, yeah, we we had a show up in Berlin right before lockdown, and it was up for. It was a lot. A lot of work went into it, and then it was up for ten days, and then um, Germany went into lockdown, and it was. It felt like a. Uh, it was a little frustrating, but. Um, then we had an opportunity to sh share it again. Um, in Estonia at the Kai Institute and This first this first piece um, was additional material for um, Than what was presented in Berlin. And uh, it's a video I'm going to share with you. It's a, uh, it's about eight minutes long. I might not let it run the entire time, but it is. Um, was done for this installation in reflection of this installation, um, and it's a, a, it's a little blue, but nothing, nothing over the top. So. Uh, I didn't make it to offend anyone. Say that. Well, let's check it out. Um, Give me something to live. Crush your pussy's a miracle. Give me something to live for. When life 
last look in your truck You were wearing your gold dress Easy winning the contest Me avoiding the coldness Song, song, sweetly in love, child Tap lazy for the keeping time Pouring rum in the cola Have me next door begging lines Steal some candles to the storm If we close, no we're fine so happy to be yours, to be mine. I was circling in the wind, just a monster of romance, just a vampire eye. Sweetly in that world Cause golden trails Through having times Come home and fuck on the sofa Oh, snow and storm Six and nine Feel so good to be inside a home Live if you The peace behind Oh, so
I won't, I won't take you all the way through the meditative part. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that was in, uh, at the Kai Center in, uh, in Tallinn. And, um, used a lot of like uh, consumer telephone apps for video effects and manipulation, which I've been messing with for the past few years, just because I found myself kind of becoming enslaved to my telephone. You know, like I certainly haven't had to watch these in the context of sharing them with a with um strangers mm -hmm. and uh it's 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 funny it feels i'm i'm seeing them differently and uh i'm and also watching pieces that are from like 4 years ago or 3 years ago and seeing like uh hopefully even with like uh as a casual a practice as this has been for me i've learned some things about how to explain express myself uh with the tools in the interim uh and so i'm noticing how the roughness of mm -hmm. of some of the early things but also i i have to say that there's something um really gratifying about the speed at which um i can get some idea out with with the tools, with these mm -hmm. consumer level apps, you know, I, I, I didn't, uh, I, I grew up with, you know, no computers and, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the technology has come so far that a, lo a lot of the work is done for you. And mm -hmm. it's like, what would probably have considered, been considered cheating 30 years ago or something. But uh, I, I, I really like the immediacy of it. I can like uh, be frustrated that I'm not hearing uh, um, what I believe, what is often sometimes like an outsider viewpoint inside of the um, dominant narrative around like contemporary happenings around the world. And um, when I say this, like I, I I'm not uh, implying in any way that I think that like uh, the the power of one memer is like equivalent to like a lot of other forms of activism, but it really it really has helped me psychologically to be able to like put together what is basically like a political cartoon mm -hmm. on my phone from time mm -hmm. to time when I've been uh, frustrated by um, the silencing of. Mm -hmm of marginalized voices. Mm -hmm. And so maybe I'll try to, I'll see if, um, see if I can find something that is along those lines. Mm -hmm. This is a, another early one. Let's cross our fingers that the audio is apparent. We're not seeing uh, the video, Kip. Is, is there maybe, could it be behind the screen that you're, the, behind the notes app?
Hmm. Is that audible? I I think um, Mizelle wants to know if you can go out of full screen with with the notes app. Uh, we we didn't see the uh, full screen of the uh, video, so still still some glitches. Okay, yeah. has that been the case the whole time? No, no, no. It's always it's always something. Always something. <laughs> um, I'm gonna find another short one. Yeah, and um. And then maybe you can tell me if it works. Yeah. You want it wasn't yeah, we, full it was not full screen though, that last one. No, no. And I, I I wasn't able to tell if it was going or not because I don't think it was, yeah. Um I think uh the notes app is blocking the video. Okay. That's Somehow okay. that was uh they've all been off of the notes app. So any video that has worked has been off of that. Also. Okay. Can I just try very quickly with? Yeah, comments? yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. And I'm going to. So maybe it's because it says sharing is paused, bring your shared window to the front. I'm not even sure what that that means, Ms. L, you know. <laughs> Maybe clicking that would be good though. I think the the full the because the notes app is is on full screen. Mm -hmm. um, I think that might be blocking us from seeing the video behind it. Okay. So if you maybe minimize the notes app. Mm -hmm. I get. I get it. That might help. I believe I understand what you're saying. Now. Can you see a still image right now? No. Ah. Uh. <laughs> okay. Can you see a screen now? No, it might also be that. Um... We can see the corner of the notes app, but not anything else. I think it's maybe, it might also be that the screen that's being shared is specifically the notes app. I know that when you can, when you go to share screen, you can select which screen you'd like to share and then just might be specifically the notes app as opposed to whatever other program uh, the videos are playing off of. So I think that there's an option to maybe share screen and do. How about now? Do you see anything? Yep, we see we see the video now. Yep, that's it right there. great yeah thank you guys for your patience uh we got it finally embarrassing um i'm gonna share another video um the, something that i shot with the with like a through the filter of another consumer video um effects application and it is a a performance of a of a song I wrote. It, um, 
I feel like in, it, it seemed like appropriate in what was supposed to be the flow of this, which has been more like uh, some kind of um, fucked up glacier. But uh, this is this is another another form of, of that the visual work is taking on um, is or is the attempt to try to um, during lockdown I, I was I was invited to participate in a lot of um, video um, performances and benefits for different causes and uh, whether stuff around the election or stuff around um, COVID relief and as awkward as as awkward as this format can be, um, sitting in front of a still camera with the presumption that you're performing for an audience is such a it, it's so far away from the being in a room with a group of people and like the sh that shared en energy that I I was pretty sure immediately that I was not going to participate in it at all but that is not the way it turned out because of the fact that I missed people so much and I missed playing music so much and also because people asked me to and their friends or whatever. So I had to try to figure out different ways to, to do it, to try to make it interesting and try to make it so that I was more engaged and so that hopefully the people that were um, getting to experience it were more engaged. And I, I don't know to what, um, how successful I've been in that so far, but but here is a, an attempt that I will share with you. And I'm gonna try to quickly get it off of the notes app and then throw the notes app away. This is a this is a song um, that I wrote a few years ago, and. Is it visible? Do you see no, not, not yet. You still have to share the screen, I believe. Oh my goodness. I wish I had some material, some jokes for you for this, this seemingly inevitable downtime. Mm. But it's coming soon, I promise. And boy, will it be worth the wait. You're gonna love it. Can it, is it visible now? Yes, definitely. Okay, so here's a static image right here. So Singing death curse against white supremacist culture. Let it follow, do do go extinct. But don't you let them take the ball home, brother. They'd rather call the game. 
they can't be captain or king They'd rather nothing at all They'd rather nothing at all They'd rather watch the thing fall And give back nothing at all I loved on the van conquer.com to ship post on my public diary Ask myself if what I had to offer Was even worth a motherfucking thing In a town to tell a different story Unplugged from this suicide machine God has come shake me awake Come show your hand God, his flags, your walls are drag She showed me in a dream But anyway, fuck a wall that ain't against the golfers Nothing against Scots, just rather gardens, trees and streams Understand I'm not advocating for no slaughter Fuck if we just let them suck all milk from mother's teats And I just wanna be free And you just wanna be free How much is that gonna hurt? Suck is paying the fee. Drop the argument and consternation. Didn't know what came here for a fight. Think I might invest in alienation. The left, the hatred unifies the right. Well, let's take a. I don't think there's money here. Vacation. Meet me where the land meets the sea. Our case is building with. Nations. Utopia's impossible, but at least we might breathe. And I've got no place to be. And you've got no place to be. And we just wanna be free. And we just wanna be free.
that was wonderful. Thank you. Am I still with you? Jeez. Okay. Yes. Wonderful. You're you're still here. Okay. Ignore that uh, whatever that that Zoom thing is. <laughs> sure. You're we're all here. That was that was beautiful. I love that. It was great. Thanks. I um. I don't. I I know that I have more that I can um share, but I also I, this this kind of would be in some ways a more exciting conversation. Okay. To me, but we could do that, Mizell. Uh, what would you like to do? It's it's Mizell's class, so <laughs> and can, can yeah, we could talk now. Yeah, yeah. we can. Uh, if you can stop sharing the screen, Kip. There's a little. There you go. Awesome. And we have uh, students uh, who submitted some questions. Um, I shared uh, some of uh, your art, uh, both music and visual art, uh, with them, and and they had some questions. So we can dive into some of those. And just a reminder, if you have any. Uh, questions for Kip uh, that you didn't submit to me personally, uh, you can uh, type those into the Q&A function and we'll be happy to uh, read those uh, aloud uh, for Kip to respond to. Um, one of the things that uh, came up for a few students uh, was an interest in how it is that you kind of navigate moving between a visual and a kind of sound-based art forms. Um, Daria, for example, wanted to know um, how does uh, your music and visual art differ in terms of uh, sharing stories that you'd like to share? Uh, do different forms uh, showcase different emotions, for example? Uh, Vanessa also wanted to know um, what your process is for choosing what media you will use to communicate a certain idea or a certain message. Yeah. I, the, <laughs> I think that... Um... The, the the easiest answer I could, could say is that like I I don't think that there has to be a, as as much of a line of demarcation between the different uh, forms of expression. Um, there are people that I friends I have that are visual artists and also have a music practice and but it's it's a rare thing for me to not be able to see see and hear the same voice and, mm -hmm. and expression uh, in bet between the two, you know? Um, and also, uh, I feel fortunate that there already is a creative form that uh, can in incorporate visual um, work and musical work. It's uh, musicals, you know? <laughs> um, which, you know, are are uh, are not not um, not f not uh, necessarily the most respected or lauded uh, creative form in this moment in time, um, but uh, that is if if I have enough time in this life, the things I'm trying to learn. I hope are leading towards the production of some type of psychedelic musical. Um, because I, I don't feel like there's an, I, I, like, the, I like to work when there is a, I, don't get me wrong, I, I love to, I could spend an entire summer just uh, doing watercolors, you know? But while I'm doing it, I, I'm going to really want to be making music. And when I'm doing the music, I'm really going to want to be doing the watercolors or, or doing animation or like, um, yeah. So I, I, I feel like the, however rough the things I shared with you, um, they are hopefully like I'm learning in the process and we'll, and, um, we'll be able to do something a little bit more intentional and larger scale that incorporates um, music and, and visuals. Yeah. Awesome, yeah, I'd, I'd be definitely up for seeing a psychedelic musical. 
Like yeah, uh, when, when I uh, there was bef before I started uh, doing like video collage and all that like uh, very like uh, rudimentary animation, I was I was drawing and painting a lot. Like since I was a kid, you know, not with like formal training or art school or something, but uh, whatever. It it brings me a lot of joy, and uh, but then once I started using the apps and I haven't and. It wasn't until this past summer that I even started seeing, a, like, the efficacy of pro programs like Final Cut, not Final Cut, After Effects or something, like, um, which I haven't really uh, dove into yet. But like, uh, but after even just using those like um, consumer apps, uh, when I'm working on a on a drawing or a painting, it's frustrating because I can't. I want it to be moving more. <laughs> but that's but that's also got had me um to try to express movement more inside of the drawings that i'm doing um which is an interesting shadow effect yeah definitely that's that that's really uh interesting and i, I think one of the th it's because you're uh, speaking about um kind of mobile technology and phones and um that's kind of what, one of the things that, that came up uh, in the presentation uh we've had a few artists who have also uh, addressed issues of technology uh, within their work. And one of the topics that um, seems to be uh, on students' minds, and I think on a lot of our minds, uh, is like the relationship between um, mental health and, and questions of technology. And I know that one of the questions that came in earlier was relating to uh, a video that you uh, produced uh, or that you were part of a cover of the song Mexico City, where you speak about uh, the relationship between music and, and, and mental health in your own personal life. Um, and the student wanted to know if you could just maybe speak a, a, about that a little bit more about the, how, how it is that you envision, uh, I guess, the role of art um, in helping us cope with the difficulties of these moments, uh, slash like navigating that in relation to, to using your phone and, and, and trying to cultivate a healthier relationship to one's technology. Yeah. Um... That that video that you're referencing, I was I was invited by some folks. I have an organization called Sounds of Saving. I think that's the name. Forgive me if I got it wrong, but um, and they they are like a suicide awareness and like mental health health awareness organization, and that is um, in, engaging musicians to try to. shed light on um, issues around mental health and advocate for for um, collective um, attention and um, energy and money to be focused on making that more available, making it available to everyone. I definitely feel like um, I um, have struggled with depression for for a, a long time, and uh, it's I, in no way am qualified to like give advice as to what someone should do in that, unless they are my friend and they're asking me, you know, or a family member asking me. But I will say that for myself, one of the things that has been a lifesaver is being able to. Uh, dive into a creative project and and um because uh, the sense of purpose that just the process can can provide is a uh, can take a uh, your mind out of the shadows and um I find that like there's a lot of things that bring me joy. And, uh, but what definitely in the top five, it's like drawing, writing a song, um, helping someone else with their songs, you know, performing music live, editing, like, and, I, and I, I'll say that like in the process, it's not, the, it's not, I'm not just like, like sitting there slobbering and grinning, like it's, it's work often, and it's it, it, there can be aspects that are tedious, but still, just being in that process and seeing and 
and getting something to completion, like it's, it's medicine. And, and I would definitely say that a, if finding something that someone else is doing creatively that you believe in and you're excited to see come into the world and being of service to that can also be super gratifying and even more gratifying sometimes if you're having some like a quarrel with your ego and quarrel with yourself like to distract yourself and engage someone else's challenges is can be really a great thing um so i i hope that that is a satisfactory answer like i also know that like it doesn't it's not always a medicine that i need but like certainly at different points different developmental stages i can think of in my life adolescence in particular um, music was so fundamentally important to me um and getting me through like the the growing pains of that um or just being like feeling like an alien in the world and then you tune into some other weirdo doing something somewhere else and you recognize that you're not alone and like if that's ever happened for you if any if anyone's work has ever helped you in that way i feel like in some ways it obliges us to like try to put something into the world to be like to you know to send out a wave you know yeah thank you for sharing all of that kip and uh george in the comments uh just wanted to share that he appreciates your vulnerability and have much respect for you sharing uh, and also that jujitsu was that kind of uh, medicine for him uh, and it was definitely a satisfactory answer so just uh, some praise and again if you have uh, questions for Kip we invite you to type uh, to share those. That, uh, uh, I, I, the last response I would say that like I have not done jujitsu <laughs> but I know for sure that like as I get older I'm recognizing that that form of, of like self therapy of doing creative work is very important, but I, it was became very clear this winter that like, I also that exercise is, is like, super effective for getting you out of your head and into your body and like, that's a, it is not, I'm not, a, I'm like, um, uh, periods of my life where I define myself in opposition to sport. <laughs> and so I was not particularly excited about like engaging in that way. But yeah, I definitely, whether it's dancing with friends, whether it's riding a bicycle, like all of these things can really um, bring me back to my body. Yeah, great. And uh, you mentioned um, collaboration and some things that inspired you. Uh, in terms of seeing others work. And we had a few questions come in uh, about those uh, things. Um, one of them, uh, Ryan and Natalia wanted to know if there's any uh, specific musicians or artists that you were inspired by when you first got into music uh, and making music. And also uh, Noah and Annabelle wanted to know um, if you derive any sort of inspiration from um, the places that you live or the places that you visit. So just kind of um questions around more broadly where where do you find inspiration for your work yeah um i definitely was inspired by uh, like more more people and more groups of people than i could possibly remember or like do do justice to remembering but i, I will say that like you know i i had a conversation at dinner last night at the studio about prints and there's so many, so much uh, re respect and admiration for that dude as an artist. He had a huge uh, influence on my mind, music, my musical mind when I was a kid, I was very, very much inspired by him, but also like not, not by his discipline uh, that didn't, that didn't really resonate with me. <laughs> But, but but with what he shared, it's kind of like a, and then I would speaking about like what inspired me 
in terms of when I began the process of like sharing music or like performing live or all of these things, like I was listening to a lot of um, like lo-fi um, rock and roll and, and noise music and the When I was a teenager, I lived in Jersey, and I, on most days, I could tune into Princeton's radio station. And, and everywhere I've lived, there's just at some point in time, like checked out what the local university stations um, had to offer. And oftentimes, it was like a, yeah, I, I, I don't use uh, the streaming services. I'm still reliant on like more on word of mouth and things that like I pick up from people that are cavemen like me, cave people like me. But uh, there was a, I remember when I was, when I was in the eighties, was really into like British indie music, like the, the Cure and the Smiths and New Order and all of that. And um, I can remember bands in high school that we were trying to basically sound like them, but thinking that we were being original. Uh, but then it was a real revelation when I started hearing like um, what people closer to my age were, were producing in the States. Um, and uh, I don't know, like, get, it, like getting turned on to, to I don't know, this is so, it feels so dated, but like squirrel bait and slint and bands like that, and guided by voices and, they, and these productions that like some of them were kind of like disciplined and hi-fi and really careful, but a lot of it was like people making really wild sounds um, in their living rooms, not on a laptop, but on a Tascam 4 track, you know, and, like, and uh, tools with, with like severe limitations, but um, severe limitations that helped develop a particular aesthetic. And uh, I'd say that like, uh, that stuff really uh, early royal trucks and the dead sea and um yeah uh harry pussy was a band from florida and i remember uh my dear friend who who's since gone um gave me a cassette of their singles collection and i was headed out on the road <laughs> 1994 uh doing setting like basically like on a rave tour with some people i had just met i just needed to get out of town and i went with them and like um and investigated that what was happening with all of that but i remember driving through the desert uh um into nevada and hearing um bill orcutt is the guitarist for that band and uh and a, a woman named Ajas Hoyas was a drummer. And uh, it, was, it was just like a, such a, on first listen, such a terrible cacophony that I thought this is maybe the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. And I took it out and then somehow like a coffee later, I was curious and I put it back in and then I couldn't stop listening to it. And it be, and I, uh, that dude is, definitely one of my favorite guitarists of all time. And I remember like then seeing them live and trying to see them live as often as I could. And some other bands uh, from that same time period, the Shadow Ring, like it just be made things evident to me that, uh, and they weren't the first to come across this reality, but in my generation, for my ears, it was the first to see that like it was up to us to define what music was, you know? And that the limitations of what that is are, are only dependent on our own patience or our own willingness to go outside of uh, l levels of comfort. And so that, I would say that stuff was really very inspiring. Uh, definitely like I decided that I could have a band if, if Harry Puss could exist and like I could have a band if the shattering existed and that I had something to share that would like maybe resonate inside of that realm. Yeah. And which led me to much different music and much different collaborations, but the starting point 
was like noise, basically. Cool. Um, <laughs> I have, I'll, I'll have two questions, but I'll, I'll, I'll be respectful and ask one. Um, you have successfully found your voice in music and art, a uh, voice that has, uh, I see as has no, no compromise. Um, can you give advice to other students on how to share, uh, how they can share their unique voice and vision and how you go about it as well in your process? Yeah. I would say first off that like, it's okay to compromise a little. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, it's kind Good of answer. Like, yeah, I, I am the person that refused to put oil in his car the one time he owned a car. And like, <laughs> the compromise of some oil would have kept the thing running much longer. Um, uh, I feel like it is, it is, uh, yeah, like, it is, it's a challenge. It's, it remains a challenge. I, I, whatever something looks like from the outside, like there's gonna be um, fallow moments and like, and like periods where like it could seem like um, maybe you were confused and maybe this wasn't what you were supposed to do and you got tricked or you tricked yourself or something. But like it's it's it, in those moments, it's what I've learned is that like the the reward is the process and the and the privilege of being able to do it at all, you know. And there's that is not an anti um, labor sentiment that I'm expressing. Like I believe that we deserve to be paid for our creative work and it is in the, that we, we all deserve to be able to live with dignity, you know, like, but also if you take it outside of the human realm, outside of capitalism, there are uh, apparently, if you, if you believe the scientists, who study this, who study whale song, um, they're, they're seasonal songs, they change and, and, they're, and they're, there's authorship. And a whale will come up with a song and it will either resonate with the pod and the neighboring pods or it won't. And there are some whales that are swimming around the ocean singing their own song. And, and seasonally the songs change, like they have there's charts, they have the charts, whatever. And, uh, my like pop charts and uh, and uh, all the songs don't catch on, but like, but sometimes they do. And then also the songs that don't catch on, the songs, the the whales that are singing those songs that don't catch on, don't stop singing them, because that's their song, you know. And uh, it's it's uh, if if you can find your voice and like that that's part of like living in truth, and truth is, is isn't always an easy thing in fact like i think it's rarely an easy thing so uh there's there is a there is a challenge it's challenging it can be challenging but it is also uh definitely more rewarding than faking it and and not and faking it and not making it <laughs> that, that would be terrible Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. That's Good a great advice. answer. <laughs> <laughs> we um, also, uh, I shared um, kind of a video overview, a curator walkthrough through the uh, exhibition Love Song uh, Sing Along. And so we got a few questions relating to that um, project. Um, and uh, some students wanted to know how you went about uh, researching. Um, and, and what it was that kind of led to a certain symbolism appearing throughout the work. And I think we saw a little bit of that uh, in the first video that you shared, uh, we, this kind of duality um, between the jaguar and the rabbit uh, mm -hmm. as, as characters and as symbols. Uh, and so a bunch of students were just really interested in, in hearing from the source, I think what, what those yeah. meant um, and, and just kind of, um, yeah, like, some of the ideas uh, that you were interested in conveying. There was another question about like 
the choice of material and in terms of painting on curtains, um, kind of, you know, what went into researching um, some of those symbols. So just maybe if you can share a little bit more about yeah. uh, about that project and and kind of how it came to fruition. Um, well, f for my for speaking for myself, like uh, I definitely like have been like a uh, like the, there's an there's an inherent like animism that comes with childhood. I think, and I didn't really leave that behind in any way. And and getting to know different ways of being that different peoples have had through time and currently, I, I think that the reason why that didn't, never went away is because it's part of, um, it's part of, it's a really potentially healthy and rewarding way to, to see this place that we're sharing. We're sharing it with so many different types of peoples and and I, I extend that terminology beyond species. And, uh, but I also, you know, can't presume to understand the consciousness of a rabbit outside of just straight observation or, you know, what a shaman could tell me or something, but uh, that, they are a figure that has resonated with me for at least the past 20, time is flying, past 30 years, <laughs> let's say. It's a figure I've been playing with. And uh, um, Chris, uh, before, in the lead up to that project, was spending a lot of time at the Jung Library in Manhattan, which is a really great place if you have the opportunity to, to go. It's kind of like, uh, it's my dream library. And I, yeah, without the pun, like it literally, it's just like a, an incredible collection of, of uh, psychological, anthropological, and philosophical uh, works. And their archive is also amazing. And so she was spending a lot of time there and, and reading about you know some symbology and archetypes and whatnot, but not and also simultaneously we over the past few years have been fortunate enough to have been invited to Mexico City for some projects and uh, um, the sculptures that are the masks that are in the work are modeled after um, masks that she bought at a flea market in Mexico City. And um, because, because of that being the origin, we definitely, you know, read up on what, what the jaguar can mean and what the rabbit can mean inside of uh, that framework. Uh, inside of a Mayan framework, and uh, um, I don't, I don't feel um, qualified to break that down. But um, that, you know, that as a figure that not, not too dissimilar from figures that um, are from the African American tradition, and there's actually a lot of overlap across communication historically around these ideas, you know, um, and ways of seeing the planet. Um, yeah, so like, I, I could, I could share like, what they spent, why, why Chris was the Jaguar and why I was a rabbit, but like, it's funny, the, the work is so personal already that it, that it, it felt kind of like, are we supposed to be doing this? Like, are, this isn't, the, the confessional is uh, maybe, uh, maybe I'm just not that aware of what's happening in the art world, but I, I'm not seeing a whole lot of that. It d didn't feel like exactly what maybe they, anyone was asking for, but 
that's that's what we did. And uh, if there's any way to leave any ambiguity so that someone could just see themselves in it and not just think about uh, the people that that put it together, that that would stop me from trying to like break down any any further who is who and why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that that's that's always the the dance with with uh, creative expression right um it being very personal but also potentially being able to read to others and it's like detonate things uh, in other people's minds and and some of the students had questions um around that um, for their final project they're being invited to potentially create an artwork um and so i think there was a few questions about how to navigate this um ability to communicate a, a very explicit message with the viewers or, or maybe not and, and leaving it open to interpretation. Um, so I think you, you've already started to share some guidance <laughs> around that and, yeah, and I still, I, what goes I into that. I don't really, I don't know the answer to that. That is something that I'm like constantly in process with because I, I get very frustrated with people when they don't want to say something. Like no one, like if it's not, it's not really super hip to like take a political direct unequivocal political stance in your creative work that's like uh and i understand why it's not i think or at least half of why it's not half of why it's not is because like it's just not that effective to be lectured to be a to be lectured at by a piece of work it's off-putting to most people um who aren't already in agreement with the sentiment being expressed. But then also there's a moment in time that I think this is a moment in time where like, just like a abstraction and also thinking about like how, how and why abstraction was pushed in the West, you know, um, in opposition to socialist art, you know, and, uh, and um, it, it makes it suspect to not want to take a stand to me in some ways. But then simultaneously, like, is it helping any if you if you're like being dogmatic and and uh, if you're making easily be easily dismissed propaganda, you know, like it, it's a it's a balancing act. But I definitely feel like I wish people would lean a little bit more into telling it like it is, because I still think that there could be an aesthetic built around that that we haven't experienced yet. You know. Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's really important um, for art to communicate a message, um, and I think that. Yeah, I, I we don't want to take up more of your time already, Kip, but I think that we can. I, th I think that's a nice place to maybe uh, end it. Um, Cause I think that, I don't know, your artwork does that very well, your art and music. And I think it, it invites us to, um, yeah, like, like it, it, I, I think I find it inspiring. It inspires me to want to also get involved. And I think that that's a really nice uh, way um, that art can be used uh, as you've been sharing, like inspiring others to also do something. Um, and so thank you for sharing your work um, and for making your work and um, for being able to, <laughs> to navigate the complexities of Zoom and the patience uh, of that. Uh, we appreciate your time uh, and appreciate um, you speaking about your work today and also speaking to students um, in Jeff's class. But uh, Jeff, is there anything that you'd like to? Just mu much love to you, Kip. And I look forward to seeing what you do in the future and um, just very inspiring. And thank you so much. Thank you so much. And um, we'll, uh, we'll be in touch in the future, we hope. Yeah, thank you so much for having me and thank everyone for your patience and your attention. I don't take it for granted. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for inviting me to, to share. So. Yeah, thank you again, Kip. We look forward to that psychedelic musical in the, right. in the future. Um, and thank you everyone um, as well for attending uh, Resounding Visions and we uh, look forward to having you next year as well. So have a good night, everyone. Bye.